Sarah. I'm a registrar for traveling exhibitions at the Smithsonian Institution Traveling Exhibition Service. And hi, I'm Cheryl Washer, and I have the same job. And you're wondering, what does a registrar do? Well, here at SITES, our job is to take care of the physical aspects of an exhibition. The cases, the signs, the labels, the extremely valuable objects, the not so extremely valuable objects. Just everything that you are going to see when you go to one of our shows. history major and so it's like oh art you don't need math for art what has that got to do with art but surprisingly enough in my job even when you're talking about um, paintings before I came to sites you need math and one of the reasons you need math is because it helps you break down a problem you want to answer something okay but that answer is so big you know how do I solve this that you really can't quite pick it apart in order to solve your problem and you don't, can't come with a plan of action. So what you end up doing is just like walking away and disgusting oh. because it's just, you just can't wrap your mind around it. And one of the things math helps me with is trying to break down this problem into smaller parts which then are easy to solve and then I can put them all together and have an answer. like the physical reality that we work with, you know, pushing things around, putting things together, figuring stuff out. And if I'm by myself spending a day doing math with a, with a, a scale ruler, you know, where, oh, look at this, the scale ruler has inches and it has metric and it has, you know, if I'm reading a plan that is one eighth of an inch equals a foot, then I'm happy to spend the day figuring out <laughs> all kinds of things. And, and I use math without even really thinking about it anymore. Um, another way I use math, I, I do conservation work, and so I, I think about taking care of objects and materials and their reaction to the environment around. So for example, Lincoln's top hat, right? Very, very vulnerable, very fragile piece of American history. The amount of light that it's exposed to is going to cause it to deteriorate, and so we need to limit the amount of light that that beaver fur top hat is exposed to so that it lasts longer so that people 100, 200, 500 years from now can still see Lincoln's top hat. So one of the things I use in my work in conservation and as a registrar is a light meter. And a light meter is something that responds to how much light falls on its sensor on top here. This light meter doesn't even have a power source. It just reacts to light. So that's kind of cool, you know, in our digital age. You can get a digital light meter, but I prefer the real thing. Um, so on the light meter, there are three different scales, and the scales are mathematical extrapolations of the same thing. So for example, one of the scales shows from 10 to 50 foot candles. Foot candle is a measurement of light. So that's like a very, I can really be very specific with this one, you know, 10 through 50 light scale. Uh, if it's much brighter and I need to go up above 50 foot candles, then I can go to the next scale up and the next scale. Um, and it sounds very technical and all, but once you start using math in your daily life, whether it's getting on the bus, how much change do I need? Two quarters and a dime, or is it six dimes, you know? <laughs> We have a, a calculating machine that the registrars use when we're adding up the cost of trucks shipping our exhibitions across, across the country. So let's say we have an exhibition tour with, let's make it easy, 10 venues, right? And then there are a number of miles between venue A and venue B, and a number of miles between venue B and venue C. So there's some calculations that involve adding up all the miles and dividing and sort of determining what our cost per mile might be based on what the shippers quote us as a price. There are other calculations we do where we're adding up what the shippers quote us as a price for the travel between, for the shipment between venue A and venue B, venue B and venue C, venue C and venue D, and we add those up and then we divide that by the number of shipments that we're making to come out with a fee that everyone shares on the tour. So there's a lot of different ways that we use math, but the thing that I like about our shared calculator or adding machine 
is that it has a roll of paper. <laughs> so you can double check that you've entered the correct number. that, you know, once you learn something in math, you've, you've created a formula on your very own. Wow. You're like you're being a scientist. Like an equation. And you've done an equation. Yeah. Well, to be good science, it has to be repeatable. Yes. So if you can't show your work and yeah. show how you got from A to B, right. what are the odds that you come up with a different scenario that's similar? And, but you can't solve it because you don't know how you got from A to B. Wow, that's mm -hmm. a good example. Yeah, I think the basic thing about math that now I understand, now that I've been working for, you know, a few years, um, is that I can take a problem that I'm facing at work or at home, making a recipe, doubling a recipe, cutting it in half, cutting it in thirds, whatever problem I'm facing, I can, I can formulate that problem into an equation or a series of equations to help me solve it. And I think I just enjoy doing that.